What's up guys, it's Miles, and in this video I wanted to talk about how to sell on Amazon.com if you don't live in the US. This is a super common question that I get from people all the time asking me, probably because if you can't tell by the accent, I'm Australian. I don't live in the US, but I do sell seven figures a year there. So I'm gonna talk about all of the things that you should probably be considering yourself if you're outside of the US wanting to sell into the US on Amazon.com um, based on my own experience, what I've been doing, as well as some of the things that I've learned over the last couple of years, um, you know, with companies in multiple countries, living in multiple countries, and all of that. So I hope you enjoy this. I'm gonna show you some things on my computer. So without further ado, let's just hop straight into it. So let's talk about non-US Amazon FBA sellers. How should you go about this? What are the most important things you need to know? Um, I'm gonna go straight into it with, firstly, like, can you actually sell on Amazon.com? The answer almost certainly is gonna be yes. Um, and there are two very quick ways to check and then we can just move on. So firstly, I'll leave these links in the description down below, by the way. Firstly, you just wanna check whether your country of residence or citizenship is accepted for seller registration. Um, so that is going to be one of these. This link, again, just check this list for yourself, but almost every single country is on the list here. So 99% of my audience is not gonna have a problem with this. If your country is on this list, there's Australia, you can find the UK, blah, blah, blah. Uh, you will have no problems registering your Seller Central account and getting started selling on Amazon. So that is both for personal accounts and for um, company accounts as well. So that's the first link. Um, and that basically means you can sign up to Seller Central or to amazon.com. The second one is to check where you can get paid. So this is countries, regions, and currencies supported by Amazon for disbursement. So again, I'll leave this link in the description, but you can check here and this has the countries so that's all the Eurozone and then not as many countries, but still lots of countries and the currencies that they'll pay. Now, again, if you're on this list, have a quick check. And if you're on the list, you don't have any issues. I'm gonna talk in a bit, in a few minutes about how you can do this better rather than getting paid in your home currency, um, you know, whether it's COP or Hong Kong dollars or whatever else it may be, how you can get paid in US dollars and save a lot of money. But I'll talk about that in a second. So firstly, that's, most countries, most people who are watching this video, yes, you can just register straight away from whatever country you're coming from um, without issues. Now, the next question is where should I register my company? And I will be talking about taxation at the end of this video, so make sure to watch to the end. But my simple short answer is if your country is on that list, that first list, just register your company wherever it is that you live. So if you're Australian, register in Australia. Um, if you live in the UK, register in the UK. That is by far the most simple thing. You want, you'll know, um, you'll have tax professionals in your country. You'll be already be familiar with the system, how it all works. Um, and it's just probably going to be the easiest, most simple thing, most simple way for you to do this. Um, I will only say then as well as a second point to this, if your country isn't on this um, country's accepted list, then what you can maybe then do is go and register US LLC, which is very easy to do from outside the US. I have a video on that, uh, which I'll, I'll link up here for you, but you don't need to register a US LLC unless you're not on that list. So again, where should I register my company? Register where you live. It's by far the most simple thing. Uh, and that's that, I don't think I had any links or anything to talk about with that other than that. So yeah, for, so for most people, it's it's gonna be you know UK LTD, um, Australian, whatever it is, PTY LTD, and so on and so forth. Now, number three, how do I get paid? Um, so the simplest way to do this, not the best way, but the simplest way is again, if you're on that country's accepted list um, and your currency is supported, then the, the simplest way is to, you've registered your company in Australia or UK or Canada or wherever else, then you open up a company bank account or a personal bank account if that's, if you're registering as a sole proprietor um, or a, for a personal Amazon seller account, and then you just get paid into that bank account and Amazon will transfer from US dollars. So you'll get, you'll generate sales in US dollars. And then Amazon, when they disperse to you every two weeks, or I think two weeks is the default, whenever they disperse that currency to you, which is your sales, your profit, whatever else, they will convert that to your home currency, according to this list, and then they'll pay it out to you. So that is the simplest way of doing this because you probably already have a bank account in your home country. Um, it's not the best way though, it's not the best way. So the issue with using Amazon's currency converter is basically fees. So I'm just gonna write these out, but basically if you allow Amazon to pay into your home, uh, either your personal bank account back home, or once you've registered your company in your own country and you've opened up a local bank account, 
if Amazon pays into that account, Amazon's currency exchange rate is, it's approximately around about 3% worse, all right? So they're gonna convert from US dollars into that home currency. And I am fairly sure and this, not 100%, so don't quote me, but I'm fairly sure that even if you open a US dollar bank account in your local country, Amazon will know that that bank account is located in another country, so it still takes that 3% fee. So I'm gonna write that down here. I'm not 100% sure on this one, but when I was doing my research a few years ago for myself, um, that's what I found out. So unless they've changed it, it's still the case. 3% uh, fee, even if, even if uh, you are storing US dollars in your own country. Now, and, and no here, 3% may not sound like much, but that's 3% on your total sales because you're getting all of that money back. So that, that's really a lot. That's like effectively 3% taken out of your margin or roughly thereabouts anyway. So you don't wanna have to pay that if you don't have to. Um, the other issue with doing this is that when you're having this 3% fee taken out, you're getting your currency converted from US dollars into your home currency, then, then you've got to pay your Chinese suppliers and you're gonna be paying your Chinese suppliers in US dollars. And so what you're actually doing is converting US dollars to your home currency back to US dollars again. So you've actually got two conversion fees, US dollars, uh, home currency, to pay suppliers. So not only are you getting the first 3% fee, which is really inefficient, but then secondly, you're doing it more inefficiently again by converting the fees, uh, by converting the currencies twice. So that's the basic and most simple way, but it's also the worst way of doing it because you're gonna lose a lot of money and it really will cut into your margins. So I do not recommend that you use Amazon's currency conversion. Um, what I recommend you use is a service or an intermediate service that will actually set up a local bank account in the US for you. Um, now the best one right now, as of the time of filming, is TransferWise. Uh, and, and I'll leave this link so that you can go and check out all of the exact features. But essentially the way it's gonna work is instead of linking to a bank account in your local country, where the US, where Amazon, sorry, will then go and take a 3% fee, then you get the currency conversion, then you get another fee when you convert it back into US dollars. You instead just have a local US bank account in the US, Amazon sees that it's US, they don't charge any fee, then you have US dollars as well being stored. So when you pay your supplier, um, there's no additional currency conversion fee. So this service, which is TransferWise, um, there are a couple of others. There's also World First and OFX as well. But right now, TransferWise is the best one. Um, but all of those services, they actually charge really, really low fees. So you're gonna be talking like 1% or less versus 3% plus whatever else on that second end. So get a TransferWise account, I highly recommend it. The reason why right now it's now the best option is because they also have just released um, this borderless, I think it's, no, it's just the debit MasterCard associated with the borderless account. So that MasterCard means that you can also do a lot of payments and other things where normally you'd have to go and open up um, a secondary debit card um, using your local bank account. So TransferWise is the best option for this right now. What you wanna open is the borderless account. And then depending on the country of residence or the country that you're in right now, you may or may not be able to get the debit card. They're rolling it out to new countries as they go. Um, but it's really cool, it's really convenient. I don't use TransferWise for my Amazon business, but I may start doing so. I have to look into this debit card a bit more, but they are the best option. Um, I, I know heaps of happy people who use them, so I recommend them. Uh, and that's that, so that's how you get paid. And then all you do is once you have, actually I'll go back to this and show you how it works. Um, but once you have your TransferWise account opened, then you can open up not only a US dollar bank account, you can open up uh, Euro accounts, you can open up a local account as well. So if you want Australian dollars and pounds and whatever else, and then you can store money in those accounts and they're, they're real legit bank accounts. Um, but you can also transfer internationally for really low fees. So that's how it works. Uh, and then you just link your bank account normally to Amazon and it's, it's easy, it's really easy. So that's how you get paid. That's how you can avoid just getting smashed with those fees on both ends as well. Um, next question is shipping questions. So you're not in the US, so physically you're not present and that can be a kind of mind trip or like a, like a, yeah, like a head fade to people where you think like I'm located in Australia or I'm in Canada, like how am I shipping goods from China to the US and like what happens to them? I mean, first of all, the business model is just that incredible that that doesn't actually matter. 
you buy the goods in China, you never have to go to China. They ship them directly to Amazon and then Amazon ships them to the customers. You don't have to be there for anything. Um, and that's how I recommend that you should do that is ship direct from China to Amazon, straight to the Amazon FBA warehouse. You don't need a third party center to store the goods at, at, at any point in the US. The key question here or the key thing that you need to um, know about is that you do need to inspect your goods or I, at least I highly recommend that you inspect your goods at some point between um, the Chinese factory and them getting to the Amazon FBA warehouse. So the easiest way to do this, and this is how I do this, and this is how I've always done this, is just get a pre-shipment inspection in China at your supplier's factory before they get shipped. This is really important. Get the inspection done before they leave the factory. Um, so I'm gonna put two recommendations here for inspection services. Uh, the first one will be Rich Forth. Whoops. Rich Forth, sorry. And the other one is the Trust. Now there are lots of inspection services. It's gonna be probably between 100 to $200 per inspection. So by getting that done with either Rich Forth, V Trust, or you can just go and search your own uh, inspection service. By getting that done, you will guarantee that you have sufficient information about the quality of your products, uh, what, they, what they look like, you know, whether they meet spec, when they're still in the factory, and if there's any issues, you get them fixed up there. So then there's no need at all to get anything or get them physically inspected when they're in the US. So in terms of the actual shipment then, um, I guess that's a topic for another video, but you will literally just be creating a shipment plan in Amazon, in Amazon Seller Central, and the address will be one of the FBA warehouses. So it goes direct. Um, and you can use a freight forwarder to, to facilitate that. And there's really not much more to, to worry about there. And so in, in terms of additional shipping complications by being a non-USA seller, um, there really isn't much at all. So yes, you can definitely ship from China direct to the US without issue. You don't have to be in the US um, to look at them or anything. So that's shipping. Uh, and then I'm gonna finish off with taxes. So this is also a really, really common question. People, um, they wanna know, you know, what's the best way to set up a company? Do you need to set up companies uh, in the US to sell? Uh, I mean, I've already answered that one, but like then also tax obligations. So what are your the requirements to pay taxes? And it's a really good question. I've spent a lot of time looking at this personally. Now there are two different aspects that you wanna be looking at or considering. One is sales tax and the other one is income tax. Um, so I'll talk about sales tax in a second, but first let's talk about income tax because this is actually the, the bigger, more important one. It's also much more complicated and I get a lot more questions about it as well. So when you're looking at taxes, you're wondering, first of all, do I need to pay income taxes in the US because I'm selling in the US? And secondly, how can I pay less taxes? We always wanna know how to do that. Um, and this is no exception. So first, oh, and I have to caveat all of this. I'm not a tax professional, I'm not an accountant. So this is just my experience and what I have learned. Uh, so I always recommend see a professional in your own country, but you will not be responsible for uh, income taxes in the US. And the reason why is I'm gonna explain how the various uh, income tax systems work around the world and you can see which one you fit into and you will be responsible for income taxes according to that taxation system. So I'm gonna to go to trusty old Wikipedia to help us explain this, but basically there's gonna be four different income tax systems. The first one is just tax-free, no income taxes, which is great. Second one is territorial taxation. So what that means is that the income tax is based on the source of the income. So let's say you live in Panama. Now Panama has a territorial taxation system. What that means is that for anyone living in Panama, if they earn income in Panama, there's a Panamanian business where they have a cafe in Panama, then they have to pay tax on that. But if they are selling on Amazon, that is sourced from outside of Amazon. So in Panama's case, there's no tax, no income tax due on the income that was earned outside of Panama in Amazon, sorry, in, in the United States. Um, so that's territorial taxation. Residence-based taxation is by far the most common one. Now I will hop over to Wikipedia so you can see. Um, and I'll leave a link to this Wikipedia article as well. It may not be updated, but I doubt that this has changed. But the, um, we can see here a map of all the countries around the world. So pick wherever your country is and go by the color. Basically the dark blue is residential taxation system, um, which is this one, residence-based. So if your country that you're living in right now has that dark blue, 
you're gonna get taxed based on your worldwide income um, back into your home country. So this is, maybe that sounds complicated, it's really not. It's like, if you're an Australian and you live in Australia, the Australian Tax Authority, Authority, the ATO, is going to tax you on your worldwide income. And similarly, if we look over here at the UK, then the HMRC, I think it's called, if you're living in the UK, is gonna tax you on your worldwide income back into the UK. Um, now the, and, and that's the most common system by far. And the very last system is citizenship based. So if you live in the US or Hungary, or I think that's Eritrea, I don't know if I'm pronouncing that correctly. Um, sorry, you're out of luck. Then your country, which is you know gonna be the US or whatever, they're gonna tax you on all of your income and it doesn't matter where you live, that's what you're getting taxed on. So that's the worst one. Um, but generally, if you're watching this, you're probably getting taxed based on a residence based taxation system. Um, so what that means is if you live in the UK, if you live in Canada, if you live in Australia, selling on Amazon US, yes, you will be taxed on that income. Um, and again, I'm not a professional, so I can't really get down into the nitty gritty, but essentially it's not gonna matter if you have a company that's based in, um, let's say you're Australian, living in Australia with an Australian company, you can't like save taxes by registering a company in Panama or in Hong Kong or in like, a tax-free country. It won't matter because your residence, the country of residence that you're in, which is Australia, UK, Canada, basically most first world developed countries, um, they're gonna tax you on that income anyway. And there's actually very specific laws and rules where they can find out that your income, even though you might be channeling it through a company that's in a different country, they will still associate that um, to you and you, you will have to pay that tax. And as far as I know, there are no exceptions to this. It's sort of changing a lot. And this is like, you know, the whole offshore thing. It's not really what it used to be. Um, so in short, if you're wondering about income taxes, you're not gonna have to pay US income taxes, but you're just going to pay income taxes wherever it is that you live. And that's again, assuming that you're a residence-based um, taxation country, which is most countries. So um, what I, recommend here is if that's you, so if you are in one of these dark blue countries and you're looking to set up a company or to earn income in a way that reduces your taxation, then you have to do it by following the rules of your country. Now, the specific rules vary, but basically in, in broad terms, what you need to be looking at is not becoming a, or becoming a non-resident of your country. So if that's Australia, you need to leave Australia and do it according to Australia's rules so that Australia thinks that you've left Australia. Um, similarly for the UK, you have to actually move out of the UK so that the UK tax authority thinks or, or knows rather that you don't live in the UK anymore. And then once you've moved out of one of those countries, um, whatever that your country is, then you move to the tax territorial taxation, I'm losing my words, ta territorial taxation or a tax-free country. And once you've moved from your home country, your residence-based taxation country, into one of these tax-free ones or territorial tax ones, like in the example I used, where if it's Panama or it's Costa Rica or somewhere like that, that income then is outside of that country. It's from, coming from the US, so they don't tax it. Um, so to get an idea, th this is a really broad topic. I'm just giving you the sort of broad brushstrokes of how it works. Um, you can do further research yourself, but basically you would need to move from, let's say you would need to move from Canada into one of these countries and legitimately move. Uh, there's, you know, there's quite a few ones on here. Some are quite nice to live in, some not so much. Uh, and that's really on you and as, as well. It depends what you're looking for. But in summary, if like most people, you just want to keep living where you are right now, which is completely fine, don't worry or don't try and use this Amazon thing as a way to reduce your income taxes. All of these governments, all of these tax authorities, they know exactly what everyone's going to try and do. And so if you try and get around the rules, try and say that you live somewhere else where you actually live in, you know, your home country, um, you'll pretty much get screwed. So that's it on income taxes. Um, there is a legitimate opportunity for you to be able to reduce your taxes down to zero or close to zero, but it re really requires a lot of work and a lot of research and really changing your life to suit that. So that's why I just recommend incorporate or register your company where you live and just keep living there if you wanna live there and be happy with it. And then, you know, you try and minimize the taxes, but you do it according to your own country's rules. So it's obviously just, claiming expenses um, and deductions as you can to reduce your taxable income and so on and so forth. So for that, you know, see a tax professional in your country. So the last issue when it comes to taxes is sales tax. Now, 
Whereas income taxes are gonna be generated or you, you will have to follow the rules of the country that you're living in generally with residence-based taxation. With sales tax, it's a US-based thing. So the actual authorities that will be trying to levy sales tax are the US states themselves. So first of all, most of the information that you'll see will be for US-based sellers. Um, but secondly, this is maybe getting into a gray area or maybe it's not even a gray area, but essentially you will still be liable for sales tax just the same as US sellers will be. Um, so all that information you see that pertains to US sellers, it also does apply to you in terms of registering for sales tax, paying sales tax. So the only other thing that I'd say when it comes to sales tax, um, again, this is not professional advice, is that most of the information that you see around compliance or the ability for US states to enforce compliance um, basically, it's easier for them to force US-based sellers to comply and to register and to pay sales tax um, than it is for them to enforce that same rule on non-US-based sellers. Now, I'm not saying whether you should or shouldn't pay sales tax, um, but do know that yes, technically you are supposed to pay the sales tax and register exactly the same as US-based sellers. All right, so I hope that answers your questions about how to sell on Amazon as a non-US-based seller. Hope you found the video really valuable and you enjoyed it. If you did, make sure to smash the like button if you haven't already. Subscribe to the channel as well to get more videos just like this coming out every single week. Don't forget I've left all the resources in the links below. And lastly, if you want more comprehensive step-by-step -step training on how to sell on Amazon FBA successfully, um, then make sure to check out my own Amazon FBA training. That's gonna be the very first link in the description down below. And before you go, if you're interested in knowing which marketplace is the best Amazon marketplace to sell on, then check out this video right here. Um, in this one, I go through a really detailed analysis of each of the marketplaces and its potential and which one is right for you as an international seller. So check that video out and I'll see you there. Peace.